Hi there, and welcome to another Tool and Tip Tuesday. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to enforce Kotlin code styles with the KT Lint tool. Now, if you're already familiar with KT Lint, you can skip ahead in the video and see how we can actually integrate KT Lint into our project and start using it. You can find the timestamp for that in the description down below. However, if you've never worked with KT Lint before, you might be wondering what exactly is KT Lint. KT Lint is described as an anti bike shedding Kotlin linter with a built in formatter. Essentially, this allows us to check our code styling and then also auto format that code if it doesn't adhere to the styling we're looking for. When we run these tools, we can get output similar to this. It'll report back which lines do not meet the formatting requirements, and it'll also specify the actual rule that it is breaking. And if the auto formatter cannot automatically fix a line, it'll call that out as well. So when you run one of these reports, whether from the command line or from your CI server, you get very detailed output about which lines of code are not matching the Kotlin code styles. So KT Lint breaks down really into two things, a linting tool and a formatter. The linting tool is based on the Kotlin standard style guide, and it will validate and make sure that your code is adhering to that style guide. And then the flip side of that coin is the formatter. If KT Lint detects that there are issues in your code, you can then run the formatter and have KTLint try to automatically fix those issues for you. KTLint itself is an open source project maintained by Pinterest, and you can find more information on GitHub or at ktlint.github.io. Here it actually describes how to set up the project, what types of rules are enforced, and it's a great resource to dive deeper into the specifics of KTLint. However, I can point out a few of the most important bits, I think, from using this tool. KTLint can save you time and it can save you energy because you don't have to manually check your code styling. You don't have to have long discussions around what code styling is going to work best for your project. You can simply add this tool and know that you're adhering to the Kotlin standard style guide for Kotlin. And then ultimately, because these are command line tools, it simplifies this whole process. You can run it locally and you can integrate it with your CI server. And with that, let's jump into a demo. First, we're gonna look at how to add KTLint to your project. And more specifically, we're gonna be integrating KTLint with the KTLint Gradle plugin. This is a separate third-party plugin on top of their basic KTLint tool. And it makes working with KTLint very easy by providing out of the box Gradle tasks with which to run KTLint commands. All right, so I'm starting out here in the GitHub repository for KTLint, which is located at github.com slash Pinterest slash KTLint. And like I mentioned previously, there's a lot of great information here about the KTLint tool itself, especially around the types of rules that it enforces. Now we wanna integrate this into our project. And so we're gonna scroll down to the integration session. And specifically, there's a section here about integrating KT Lint using a plugin. The plugin that I have found easiest to work with is this first one right here, KT Lint Gradle. So I'm gonna click on that. And this will take us to the project page for the KT Lint Gradle plugin. It's described simply as a KT Lint Gradle plugin. So there's no confusion there about what it's doing. And if we scroll down here to the documentation, we'll see the section here for how to set this up. And now there's two ways that you could go about setting this up. If you're on an older project using an older version of Gradle, you could use the first method here. However, if you're using newer versions of Gradle, in this case, I have a brand new Android Studio project set up. And so I'm using Gradle version uh, five something, I believe you can take advantage of the new Gradle uh, plugin API. And so that's an example of what this looks like right here. So we can add this plugin to our root level build.gradle file, and then we can apply it to all of our sub projects so that we have those 
KTLint tasks available in all of our modules. And really that's it. That's all we need to do to set this up. So let's take a look at how we can actually do that in our Android Studio project. So here I've opened up a brand new Android Studio project and I've opened up the root level build.gradle file. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add the plugins block and I'm gonna specify the ID of the Gradle plugin and the version of 7.1. So now we've added the plugin to the project and we want to make those tasks available to all of our other modules. To do this, we can add apply plugin and then the ID to the KTLint Gradle plugin. And so this will then make those tasks available to all of our modules once we've synced our project. So after a quick sync, we can test out whether these tasks are available. We can do that by opening up the Gradle window and then if we open up the verification section here, we'll see now that we have three tasks added. We have KT Lint check, KT Lint debug check, and KT Lint release check. So you see it's creating a KT Lint check variant for each of our build types. Similarly, if we go to the formatting section, we'll see KT Lint format, and then KT Lint debug format or release format. And that's it. That's all that's required for a simple integration of KTLint into your existing project. Now that we've seen how we can add KTLint to our project, let's actually use it. Let's take a look at the KTLint check command to run the linter and the KTLint format command to run the auto formatter. So now I'm back over in my main activity within Android Studio. And I want to see if my code passes the KTLint check task, meaning that it adheres to the Kotlin standard style guide. So to do that, I'll open up my command line and I'll type dot slash gradle w ktlint check. And this will start running that ktlint check task. You see here that it says build failed. So it means that that task did not succeed, which means that I have formatting errors in my code. And we'll see here specifically, it calls out three things. I have some unexpected indentation on line nine, an unexpected blank line on line 11, and another unexpected blank line on line 13. So notice that on the error from line nine, it says cannot be autocorrected. However, the other two can be autocorrected. So let's try fixing those using KTLint format. To do that, we'll type dot slash Gradle W KT Lint format and hit enter. So this has gone through the code. And once again, it's reported the issue on line nine saying it could not automatically fix this indentation issue. So if we come here, let's fix that indentation issue and let's rerun this KT Lint format task. And see now this time it says that it was successful. So if one more time we type dot slash gradle w ktlint check and hit enter, we should now see that yes, the task was successful, meaning the code in this file is adhering to that style guide. So this is the very basics of how you can work with those tools. You can run ktlint check, see what errors you have, use the auto formatter to automatically fix errors, and then manually address anything that it can't automatically fix for you. And between these two tools, you can keep your Kotlin code styles consistent throughout your entire project. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, devs. If you liked the video, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear what other types of static analysis tools you're using in your projects, and I'll catch you in the next video. Until next time, devs.